All right, we are good to go. All right, so good morning, good morning, world. We are on site, we are on location. Uh, what a past couple of weeks it has been. A new spike in coronavirus cases all across the country, uh, big spikes uh, here within the home states. Um, an NBA champ has been crowned. Uh, LeBron has claimed his fourth NBA title, y'all. Um, Trump got whooped in Thursday night's presidential debate. Uh, you can basically state what you want to state, but he pretty much got whooped. Um, and the World Series in college football is in full effect. Uh, who you got for the World Series pick, world? Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays or the LA Dodgers? Could LA have another championship? And so with that being said, introducing this morning the guru, although I'm sure he will not label himself as the guru for the eighth week in a row, my brother Jamar Goodman. What's good? What's going on, man? Good morning, y'all. Morning. So with that being said, you guys know who I am. I'm Mr. Brandon Price, and together we are the gurus. No, I'm joking. We're just a few brothers whom created the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. We thank you all for tuning in, and we look forward to giving you all a great show today. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So with that being said, bro, we've um, been seeing the greatness of LeBron. It's been very oppressive. A lot of folks have um, been asking questions, man. And so I just I, I want to relay this question on the podcast and I want to relay it to you. Um, you know, is or does this help LeBron's case, Jamar, for being the greatest of all time over my or maybe our Michael Jordan? I mean, I look. Like I, I feel like right. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess this is about as uh, you know subjective as it gets. I mean, some people, some people got them. You know, very very slim people got them as the greatest already. Some people said he's close. I feel like a lot of people, maybe including myself, feels like like you still far off. Mm -hmm. Probably it's not enough time for you to get there. It's based on the resume. So I'm gonna say this. I mean, like LeBron, like we we shouldn't. It's like it's not bashing LeBron because like LeBron is great. LeBron, you know, as a once in a generational player, like just basically, and, and these type of debates just just don't hate on LeBron and don't hate on Jordan. Just you know appreciate greatness but mm -hmm. since we you know gonna ask a question to pick hairs here um i mean i, I guess i mean it helps but I, I feel like it doesn't move the needle much at this point i mean i feel like what he got like three years left in his playing career if that maybe maybe four maybe maybe four maybe stick around for Bronny. i mean you know right that's his goal that that that'd be a sight to see for real um but I feel like there's so much, I guess, quote unquote, stains on his resume before to this point that, in my opinion, just not going to get there unless he just maybe if he, I don't know, maybe if he ran off the next four straight championships, then it, it can get maybe other than that, I don't see it. I mean, so you telling me, bro, if he doesn't get six like Jordan, you can't put him as greater than Jordan? You can't make a case for that? It's hard for me to. And it's because the the stuff that happened in the past, like, it's, everything is a totality of your career. We just can't take, like, the second half of your career and, like, ignore the things that happened before. It's, it's the whole package. You're talking about the loss to the Celtics, the loss to the Mavericks in the finals. You're talking about that type of stuff, right? Yeah. The push the, the, to go to Miami – with the heat and oh, get this man. big three. Jordan never did any of that. Okay. I, I mean, I see your point, man. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, good perspective. Um, I'm going I'm to I'm be very clear here. Um, and I might make a few more folks mad here, but I don't care. Look, LeBron, if he gets two more titles with AD, I'm sorry, y'all. You got to put LeBron as the greatest of all time. And the reason why you have to do so is because in that case, that man would literally have been to the finals 13 times. He's already been there 
11 times. It's unfortunate that he ran up against some great teams with the Warriors, uh, some Greg Popovich-led Spurs teams. And as we all know, man, the Spurs and Greg Popovich play no games. Um, so, you know, uh, he ran up against some great teams there. Um, the one issue I do have um, with LeBron's legacy, y'all, uh, it was just like for me, like LeBron losing to the Celtics, not getting past and KG and those guys and, and, and struggling with them in the playoffs and, and them bullying him around. They damn near seemed like they had some LeBron rules, sort of like the Pistons had the Jordan rules. It was very similar. So I can't put that necessarily as a stain on his legacy. But what I can put is that loss to the Mavericks. I really felt like regardless of the fact of um, them having their first year or getting their continuity together and different things, I felt that y'all, LeBron should have beat the Mavericks. I, no disrespect to Dirk, Dirk Nowitzki. I mean, nice. he, he, you know, all-time uh, great power forward, great shooter. But he just, he, you know, I, I really think that the, the, the Mavericks really um, either lucked up or the – I mean, LeBron and them just wasn't mentally ready. He I'm wasn't. Saying, he was still like mentally weak at that time. He was still yeah. mentally weak at that time. I was like, Go yeah. ahead. You were saying call it what it is? Yeah, call it what it is. Like, the Mavericks was ready to play. The The Heat was more talented, but they just didn't get it done. And it just looks bad overall. Yeah, I mean, you could say call a spade a spade. Um and yeah, I mean that's that's the one thing in his legacy. But LeBron, man, um, you know, just his overall IQ, uh, his dominance uh, when it really matters. Um, those are a number of things that you know can put him to make a case for Jordan. But uh, I'm sorry, I can't necessarily put him there now. Um, if he were to get six, y'all, if he were to get six then yes, I can make a strong argument for LeBron that he will be the greatest of all time. But right now, he does not have any case. Um, number two, his mid-range game, um, his shooting game, he, he needs to step that up. He bricks a lot. I don't know if words y'all notice, he missed a lot of free throws. Um, Jordan would never do that. Um, Jordan had never taken off on the defensive end. Uh, LeBron steps up when it matters, but Still at times, he's still a liability sometimes on defense. Um, so right now, I can't put him past Jordan. But if he were to get to get those six titles, I, I it would be hard for me to argue with 13 finals appearances, multiple uh, MVPs, what, four, uh, possibly every year, damn near, you can argue he's uh, an MVP candidate or at least the MVP, actually. Some people argue that he's the MVP every year. Um, you can't argue with the pressure coming in from day one and just surmounting all of that. Um, yeah, you, you, you can't, you, the, the teammates, his, his pedigree of leadership, um, to go to wherever he goes to and they become an instant contender for the championship. Uh, these are cases that can be made, but, um, you know, it, it's just a case. It does not mean even if still at six titles, he possibly still wouldn't be greater than Jordan because Jordan just, you got to look at defensive player of the years. You got to look at, you know, six and no finals. You got to look at never went to a different team. You got to look at the fact that he uh, just points all time, you know, uh, just a number of things, man. Scoring titles, um, MVP. Making my case for me. <laughs> I know, man. So it'd be hard. Uh, but, you know, if LeBron was to get those six titles, then, yeah, possibly he have a chance. All right. So with that being said, let's move on. We've addressed that question that everybody seems to want to talk about. Uh, but next year, bro, the, Le the Lakers, they're perennial favorites to repeat as NBA champs. And so I'm just curious, which team in a Western Conference has a chance to dethrone their repeat? Or do you have a team possibly overall, whether in the West or the East, um, that could stand in the way of the Lakers repeating next year? Yep. Um, it's basically the team that took the year off. 
to get healthy. Okay, I got it. Yep, you you already know them. Them boys are coming back. They're bringing the band back together minus KD. But hey, they won one without KD. Talking about the Golden right. State Warriors. Mm -hmm. See, so they they actually made. I feel like they made some sneaky moves between in the last year. So so yeah, they the biggest thing that they did was. They traded, they got something back for Kevin Durant, which was D'Angelo uh, Russell, who they mm -hmm. eventually flipped and got Andrew Wiggins. And with their draft stock, they got the number two pick. So you bring it back, Steph, you bring it back, Clay, uh, Draymond Green, who's effective when both of them are playing. You have Wiggins, which would probably be a trade trip, and you got the number two pick. So more times than not, like, that pick is probably going to get shipped off somewhere. They're probably going to bring in somebody else because they're in the middle of their prime. They know that they can really compete because they have championship pedigree. Um, they're not in rebuilding mode. So between now and when the season starts, as of right now, it's looking like December 22nd from the info that appeared up yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I expect some more roster changes. I expect them to be right back in the thick of things, and we probably going we probably gonna see some classic battles next year in the Western Conference alone. But bring mm -hmm. back Steph and the boys. That's your biggest threat right there. And this is okay. All right. Um, wow. I mean, I, I stand in agreement that the Warriors, man, they will be tough. Um, coming back with their health, coming back with their overall team. Um, the Warriors definitely will be somebody that will be a force to be reckoned with. Um, but I want to add in a few more things here. Sure. Um, I like uh, those guys over in Brooklyn. They took a year off. Yeah. Uh, but you, you got to be very, very mindful of Kevin Durant, man. This dude gives LeBron the business. I don't know if the world noticed. But <laughs> when they step on the court, he, he busts LeBron ass. Then LeBron busts his ass too a lot, but and they be busting each other ass. But like Thanks. KD would give it to him, <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> and the thing about KD is, who in the NBA can stick him? I was just comparing him like, or comparing Brianna Stewart to him at the WNBA. Nobody can block their shot. They lanky, they tall. He got a seven six foot wingspan. Like nobody can block that, bro. Like. It is legitly, um, and with Kyrie, with his skill set, with, with Spencer Dinwiddie, with, with, with that big dude with the afro. Um, uh, Jared Allen. You know, Jared Allen, the, the white boy that can shoot that three-pointer. Um, you know, that kind of remind me of Kevin Love for the Nets. Um, with Levert, um, he can get buckets, y'all. He can go off. Um, the Nets, yeah, I, I, I like them to be tough. It just depends on um, Steve Nash and what he can do as a coach. But from what I hear, I heard that KD and Kyrie hired him because they know he ain't going to do much. They just they want to be the coaches. They want to be like the LeBrons, basically. Literally, they said it. they want to be like the GMs just without being a GM, running running the whole show and saying this is what we're going to do to get the champion because we know how to get there. And so um, in a way, Steve Nash is going to be like a, 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 a I don't know what you want, what you want to say, like a, a, a just a guy that's standing in the space. Um, and different things because uh, he's had no coaching experience. I don't know how the hell he got that job. Nah. Anywho, um, yeah, that's another story for another day. Yeah. But um, basically, I also want to make this point, uh, world, that there's going to be a lot of good teams in the East and the West next year. I don't know if you heard. Let me go down the line. So we start with the East, all right? So in the East, you're going to have Toronto coming back. Rumor right now, y'all, is that Chris Paul could be going up to Milwaukee. So you got Milwaukee right now that stands as a serious threat if they get Chris Paul. That will remind me literally of the Lakers pretty much. Because Giannis, when he gets going, he's unstoppable. He just If he have a Chris Paul that can break down that defense, oh, man, it's curtains. Because he's going to be in the hole all day. It's going to be curtains. Um, you got uh, – Indiana, who I think y'all, uh, they, they didn't get some bonus last year in the playoffs. That boy can ball. Um, you still have Victor Oladipo. You got TJ Warren, who is a perennial all-star that can get buckets. Indiana, please don't sleep on them for the regular season. Um, you got uh, those three teams. 
you got Boston. So that was my pick to win the East last year. You got Miami coming back with these boys, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, uh, J- Jimmy Butler. You know, you got Crowder. You got uh, Olenek. You got, you got some hoopers there. You got Bam. Uh, so that's five teams right there. Um, another team that will come back next year that will be a perennial threat in the East um, is Brooklyn. So you got Brooklyn that's going to come back with their health. Um, that's just going to make things very interesting right there. Um, and then the last team, um, you know, and I'll mention Milwaukee. I mean, I'll mention Orlando um, as an eighth contender, but I'll like them to fight with the Bulls if the Bulls were to um, hopefully not be in the rebuild mode. But that seventh team I was thinking of in the East would be the um, – uh, It would be the uh, Cavaliers will probably suck again. Um, and I'm trying to think of that team that made the playoffs last year. Oh, yeah, the Sixers with Doc Rivers. So oh, yeah. you got <laughs> literally uh, seven legit powerhouses, okay, in the East. I don't know who coming at the East this year. I don't know. Um, I, I would guess I would bat with KD, but I wouldn't be surprised if Joel and beat them whoop them. That's how the East going to be, and they're not going to be a – they're not going to be a, a, a easy out in the finals either. Let's put that out there now. Um, okay, with the West, we know about the West, y'all. Um, you got Luke and them coming back. Um, you got the babies now um, in New Orleans. Um, they want to fight, you know, and they just hired Stan Van Gundy, who I think is a, a great NBA head coach. Uh, you got the Rockets, who have a head coach in vacancy. But, you know, Russ and those boys, James Harden, the greatest scorer in the NBA, um, the greatest uh, one-on-one score in the NBA. He not finna go, not, not at all. San Antonio always fighting for a playoff spot just because of the great man of Greg Popovich. Uh, but let's get to the real contender. So I said Houston. I said Dallas. Um, we got the Lakers. Um, I think also one of the biggest threats to the Lakers, <clears throat> and y'all can put that again. They were, they were the five favorites last year. Don't you dare disrespect Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. They coming again. They will be there. They will be angry. They will be pissed off because they know that they didn't reach their heights. Guess what, y'all? They got the same. Mm. Only difference is now they got a coach that's going to get in their face with Ty Lue. So uh, please, please be very aware of the Clippers who could easily t- come out of the West and come out and win this whole thing next year with Kawhi. You want to talk about KD, you got to talk about Kawhi. Um all right, so we got the Lakers. We know about the Lakers, right? Uh, they're going to come out tough. You got Dame time in Portland. Um, think him and C.J. McCollum, they're going to sit down and want to just watch LeBron win his ring again? No, they're going to have something to say about that. They're absolutely going to have a lot to say about that. You think that Nikola Jokic, uh, Nikola Jokic and, 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 you know, Murray and those guys and, and a, a Porter that's going to grow up now, a Porter Jr. and um, a grant that grew up right before our eyes in the playoffs. You think Denver finna sit there as babies now and now they're becoming adults that they finna just sit there and lay down? Not at all. Um, you got, uh, man, the West, who Phoenix, I mean, Devin Book and them. You, you think they finna lay down? Uh, the West is literally a, a gauntlet, man. It really is. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's something to... <laughs> It's really something special to see um, with just everything that goes on in the Western Conference. It's always um, very entertaining, to say the least. And, and, and you know, it, it all depends if, if OKC, I mean, I know they're young, too, but, I mean, they got a year of experience, too. I don't think they're just going to lay down. Um, so with the West uh, and, and the last – Team I forgot to mention, y'all, uh, was the Utah Jazz with Donovan Mitchell and, and, and his and his antics of just going off on people. So um, the West, no lay down, no moment, no lacking. It's a no lack zone, period. And so um, there will be a number of teams in the NBA next year that will be great teams, um, let alone um, having, for me, the Clippers, the Nets, and the Warriors. Uh, being right there to give the Lakers trouble. And if I had to pick a second team from the East outside the Nets, that would be a perennial threat to win it all. 
Um, this year, I actually will like Milwaukee to be a lot tougher mentally, um, especially if they get a point guard. I would like Toronto to be right there too. They lost in seven games and another year of maturity for Boston. So um, yeah, good luck Lakers. Um, I know people got y'all as, um, you know, possibly just to win it all next year, but it will be very, very tough. Uh, we're going to put that out there in the early morning sports talk podcast. It'll be tough, very tough. All right. So that answers that big burning question. Um, the Lakers will have it uh, very, very rough next year um, if they think they want to go around and win a, uh, another second championship. Um, so, yeah. Any final thoughts, man, before we get into some baseball? Man, um, between now and before the Olympics, because that's when the season go in, we're going to see some crazy, crazy stuff. So I'm excited, man. That's what's up, man. That That's what's up, man. And so, yeah, you know, like, you got all of that going on. Um, we'll see how things turn out. Um, all right. So, hey, man, it looks like we picked some um, great picks for the World Series, um, at least in regards to our picks for the championship, uh, you know, rounds. Um, these championship series were very competitive. They both went to game seven. Excellent. Um you know, you had the Braves and you had the Rays. I had the um, Braves and the, um, who was the team that lost in the ALCS, the NLCS? Was it, um, uh, well, no, the ALCS. Uh, um, it Astros? was the Astros, yes. And so I would have loved to seen uh, Dusty Baker get back to the World Series. But man, he got to be very proud because they were 29 and 31 in the regular season. And they... Uh, Man, they got it together. And so um, the, the the championship league series were phenomenal. But uh, right now, as you know, we got the Rays, we got the Dodgers. Again, this is a Florida LA battle for the championship. Um, and so, yeah, man, just um, give me your pick for the World Series. And, and people out there, feel free to chime in as well. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, like I, I, like in my heart, I generally root for underdogs. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm taking I'm taking the race because I mean I feel like it's just their time um, to to get it done. They they are a complete baseball team. I know the Dodgers basically are as well. But I just like the way that you know the Rays are playing the game. How they you know doing what they got to do to to make it all through nine innings and get the W. I'm taking the race. They they've been. They've been solid all year. They've been very consistent. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm mm-hmm. going. Hey man, I hear you. I, I can't I can't knock that pick at all. That is a wonderful pick. Um for me, man, I gotta go with the bright lights. I gotta go with the Dodgers, man. And you know why I gotta go with the Dodgers, bro? I know. And I don't blame you. you. Know why I gotta go. Mookie Bags. Yep. I've been saying it for the longest that he is the best player in baseball. I don't know where the hell these white supremacists, excuse my French, um, keep getting the, f- they just blow it up. You see how they try to blow up this number, uh, this number 23 for the Carolina Panthers, just cause he's a white boy. Um, and they give him an overall 99 rating. He suck. He can't win a football game. Okay. But they keep blowing him up. This and that will off the bam as the greatest, the best running back. What did we tell y'all on the early morning sports talk podcast prior to the season? We said Derrick Henry will run all over the NFL. What is Derrick Henry doing? Running 94-yard touchdowns, 200-some-yard games every game. This man damn near 1,000 yards already. He going he to gonna, he gonna possibly, y'all, get 2,000. We putting that out there. He possibly going to get 2,000 and pass with Damian Thomason record and pass Chris Johnson record. That's how bad he's running over the league right now. Uh, uh, but, but folks want me, Christian McCaffrey the best. Oh, no, don't give me that one. All right, so it's the same with this guy, Mike Trout in L.A., who they just seem to give him an MVP every year when the L.A. Angels are literally the worst team damn near in baseball. And somehow, someway, just because he hit a few home runs or this or that, somehow he's just the god of baseball. Don't give me that baloney. Uh, Mike Trout, it's about time you win a playoff game. It's about time you make the playoffs, buddy. It's even about time you win a World Series. Until then, I don't want to hear that crap. I don't want to hear that baloney. The best baseball player in baseball is Mookie Betts. 
But you know what would be additional credibility? is him winning in Boston, but then coming to win in LA in his first season. Now that is what you call being effective. That's what you call being a leader. That's what you call being a winner. And so Mookie Betts, he's very well, y'all, on his way to having an MVP as well in this series. He's been killing. And so if it comes down to it, I like the Dodgers uh, to win this World Series. Um, and I would pick them out of respect for the Rays because the Rays are a very tough team. I would have to pick six or seven um, if I could pick a, a six or seven game series. Because the Rays are young, they got great pitching. They've been the best team in the AL. Literally, this World Series is, from a regular season perspective, the these are the teams. two best teams with the two best records. And so, um, but if it comes down to it, man, I like the bright lights. I like the Dodgers uh, to come out with this thing um, in six or seven games. And for LA, man, to be celebrating a, a championship um, and, and – um, the Lakers and the um, Dodgers. But then again, if Tampa win, y'all, the Dodgers, I mean, Tampa be celebrating two championships too. Yeah, would be celebrating the Tampa Bay Lightning from hockey and then the Rays. And then, I mean, they just got AB and 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 and, and the Buccaneers. So, you know, Tampa Bay living real good right now. They living real good. So, um, yeah. So, all right, man, let's get into some football. Uh, we've been making – picks and predictions this morning and we will continue to do so um uh -huh. so the big 10 has now started back up and so jamar i'm i'm just i'm very curious do you have the purdue boilermakers coming out of the big 10 this season and represent us in the college football playoff Whew. what do man. you think man do you what what do you think man you know what like you know i, I i've been paying close attention to them and you really, no. you have, they look good, don't they? Man, they, 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 they. You know, they, you know they, Rondell Moore, though, he out uh, for, I, for, for, for the first game. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, they're, they're the best wide receiver. I'm pretty sure, I, I believe he opted out. So, uh, yeah. Prospects I, are looking pretty tough, huh? No. no. Okay. Not this time. Mm. All right. Yeah, maybe next year. Um, yeah. Follow up, so I mean, but maybe next year. It's just, you know, yeah. it's looking real rough right now. But okay. yeah, <laughs> Whew. yeah. yeah but, I, just, uh, I want, I want to ask that man. It was a burning question, you know. I understand, man. We we have to yeah, spend a little time on them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got to. Right. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. Anywho, the main question, man, is who do you have coming out of the Big Ten? And also, if possible, man, can you give me a, a sleeper? that could come out of the Big Ten? Because whoever seems to come out of this Big Ten, I think will represent um, in the college football playoffs. So who you got, man? Who do you feel, you know, with the startup happening last night, obviously, Illinois getting smacked against Wisconsin. Like, who do you got, you know, as a potential sleeper, and who do you got as possibly coming out of this whole thing? All right, so, you know, with it being the way that it's structured, you know, Big Ten late to the party, not sure how any of this is going to play out. So with that being said, I'm about to take house money and go with the Buckeyes. Yep, I, I have, have to. It's the, it's the perennial favorites. Uh, sleeper? For some reason, I, I always gravitate towards their rival. I always do. Mm -hmm. And they, they usually start off, well, at times they start off solid and flake. And sometimes they flake in the beginning and finish strong. I don't know. I for some reason I'm 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 gonna gravitate towards him just because of this wacky year that we're in. Uh, Michigan is my dark horse, but Ohio State that's that's my pick to represent the Big Ten for sure. And I feel like if they get in there, they can definitely do some damage. Right. Um, for me, man, I like that quarterback. Uh, yes, Fields. <laughs> yeah, Justin Fields. So for me, um, this kid is going to be possibly the top three pick in the NFL draft. Um, he is a baller world. Uh, he is uh, a great scrambler, but he is a better pocket quarterback. And let that's me, scary about him. Let, let me ask you this really quick. Do you feel more comfortable with him coming out than when uh, Dwayne Haskins came out? Oh, yeah, I feel definitely a lot more comfortable because Dwayne Haskins, he wasn't ready for the NFL. I don't know who 
was basically yeah. stating that he was ready. He he was terrible. Um, you know, just well, he's been terrible in the NFL. He's been terrible. Oh, it's been terrible. It's yeah. been it's been tough to watch. Um, yeah, you know, he looks very young too. Um, and then when he got his first victory last year, they damn near almost lost that game last year. And then he all on the side of line celebrating and different things, taking selfies. And it was just like, bro, grow up, please. Like, yeah, it's 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 really been a, a tough time to watch the Wayne Haskins. But I like the current Buckeyes team. I like their running back. Uh, that kid uh, comes from Florida. Um, Brown, I believe his last name is. And he is a beast. Um, he will continue that great tradition of Ohio State running backs. Great receiving core, um, you know, and, and their coach, I mean, you know, I know he doesn't have the big name as Urban Meyer, but uh, Brian Day is a very great coach. And so I like the Buckeyes to run the table, but for my sleeper. Um, so I like Michigan, but Michigan always just seems to disappoint. I know. <laughs> um, this always seems to disappoint and come up short with her, uh, with, with, with the oh, Harbor yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't think they'll get past Ohio state. Um, but I like out of the big team West, um, I like the Wisconsin Badgers. Um, the reason why I say it's always a safe pick, everybody, is because they got a great running game. And they they know they they always produce the best offensive linemen, always produce the best running backs. All their running backs are first round picks and have successful NBA, I mean NFL careers outside of Ron Dane, yeah, um, which is a big bust. Ooh. He was a big bust, big dude, everybody. Dude. Net collar, all he, that going. Dude, him, him coming out reminded me of Michael Sweeney for basketball when he came out of Georgetown. That oh that's what man, they reminded me. a big bus. Yeah, man, and and you know who else uh, was a big bus? Um, you got Ron Dane coming out as a big bus, and then Curtis Enos. Remember him that played for the Bears? Oh Jesus Christ! Oh. Anyhow, he was a he played for Penn State. But um, yeah, that was just it was it was it was just rough, and so yeah, um, Wisconsin always produces great uh, running backs, great offensive linemen. Um, David Gaxall surprisingly some nice receivers, but more importantly, we're putting the world on notice. The quarterback for the Wisconsin Badgers, um, this kid last night, Jamar, twenty one for twenty two. Maybe it was just because he was playing U of I. Their defense looked terrible. They didn't even want to be on the same field as Wisconsin. They looked really bad, U of I. Oh, man, they like they're going to win one or two games. They look really bad. Um, I don't know if they're trying to figure out who their quarterback going to be or what, but U of I just looked terrible. But basically, with that being said, um, you got uh, a quarterback who went 21 to 22, passed for 300 yards, um, and threw five touchdowns. Maybe it was just you of I. This was his first start, so he's young. Um, but I like that in a first start. I really do. I mean, I know it's against you of I different things, but we're putting the world on notice that this kid could very well be a Heisman candidate, could be a very well future first round pick, it could very well be somebody that could lead Wisconsin to that next level. So um, if he stays healthy, I think this kid will torch the Big Ten. Um, and so because of all those reasons, I like Wisconsin to definitely be a sleeper and somebody that could potentially match up with Ohio State in that Big Ten championship. I can see so, that for sure. Yes, sir. And so, yeah, man, um, we, we talked about that. But let's get to now, like, the best college team in college football. Um, could we possibly be looking at a Bama Clemson National Championship rematch? But – just curious, man, out of your, you know, what you've been seeing in college football, who do you think right now is the best team? Man, and I, I want to give the edge, you know, I'm going to give the edge to Clemson, but it is not that I, I can see your point there. Yeah, they like, they just look really good. I don't, once again, I don't know if, you know, in this crazy year, you know, things happen, whatnot. But it, I feel like they, they haven't missed a beat. I know Bama is still Bama. So I feel like they're close up there. Uh, you know, we thought Georgia was 
it's going to be there. They just can't get over that. Get that monkey off their back against Bama. Uh, no, I, I'm going Clemson. Trevor Lawrence looking like the real deal once again. You know, uh, it's funny because there's, there's analysts saying that just like they told uh, – What's his name? Andrew Luck at the time, like basically uh, the team that's looking like the worst team in the NFL, the New York Jets, basically telling him to stay for another year and just, just right. abandon the whole <laughs> situation. <laughs> but, but yeah, man, as of right now, I'm I'm going with house money again. Clemson. Um, right. Who you think? Uh, yeah, man, for me, um, when it comes to college football, we generally know, right, like, who's going to be the good teams. We yeah. generally know who's, like, going to be the, 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 the tough teams that will come out. A lot of people was on this Florida bandwagon, man. They really like Florida, bro. Like, they like them to, like, replace LSU and be that team that can just come out of the SEC or, sorry, just come out of nowhere and, and run the table. Um, and a lot of people are liking Florida, but they lost to a and So for me, that's an issue. Yeah. Um, and so now, man, I think it's clear cut, you know, Clemson, um, they are head and shoulders above um, everyone. Um, Bama stands as their toughest um, opponent. Um, everyone, Clemson's number one, Alabama's number two. Um, so they're right neck and neck with each other. Um, Overall, though, more impressively, the Clemson Tigers, they've just been blowing people out. Um, like Trevor Lawrence had put up 60 some points in the third quarter on the road at Georgia Tech this past Saturday and literally on the bench the whole fourth quarter. Um, I mean, just torched the lights out of those kids in Atlanta. And so, like, you know, you look at Clemson, they um, are being led by truly one of the greatest quarterback prospects a lot of people feel since. Um, arguably Dan Marino or um, some of those greats. And so a lot of people are on this uh, Trevor Lawrence bandwagon. And so um, I would say Clemson, man, they appear to be the best team in college football. Um, But, you know, as as many people state, styles present fights. And so um, we'll we'll find out if Alabama has the style to match with Clemson um, when it comes down to, you know, them possibly meeting up uh, in the in the college football playoff for the national championship, if if likely if 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 Ohio State goes undefeated, if Alabama goes undefeated, if Clemson goes undefeated, and let's say a weak team that probably will get in to get out, let's say the Irish, um, they get in, um, they seem to have problems with teams like Duke and, and Temple, beat them by five points, but somehow they always get in the playoff because they're Notre Dame. Um, possibly a Notre Dame or somebody else could get in um, and get blew out, but that'll possibly be that fourth team. So we'll see who that could be. I like the mid majors, man. Give some of those teams a chance because they um, they would definitely put a better fight up. I feel um, over um, Notre Dame, um, who people seem to be all in their bandwagon just because of Notre Dame. But anyhow, um, that's my pick. Um, uh, you know. I, I like Clemson, man. Um, we'll see how things turn out. Um, yeah. yeah. So, all right, bro. Um, I don't know if you heard about the breaking news last night. Oh, do tell. Okay. So, the breaking news is that Antonio Brown, okay, Mr. Cuss Out Your Wife, uh, <laughs> Mr. Cuss Out Your Mistress, Mr. Cuss Out... Um, Robert Kraft and, and, and cuss out <laughs> and cuss out Mike Tomlin and Dan Roethlisberger and then make up with him and, and say you're sorry. Oh, That's, don't, don't, um, don't forget John Gruden. <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. John Gruden as well. Um, and anybody else who can uh, get that smoke. Um, very talented football player, man. I think uh, when he was in the NFL was the best wide receiver easily in the NFL. Uh, because of his explosiveness and, and different things, um, he is back in the NFL. You know what, world? I love it. Um, shout out to the Idiot Bears fan base who, oh, yeah, he's a problem. He's a he's a locker room. He's a virus. Um, yeah. It seems that the teams that want to win, 
they can, you know, kind of overlook that stuff and, and, and kind of say, hey, man, you come in, be professional, do this. We're, we're trying to win football games. We're trying to win a Super Bowl, not make the playoffs and lose off field goals like the Bears do all the time. Okay. And so um, Bears never made a pitch towards Antonio Brown. Of course, they, they, they'll never do that. Um, but he's now, um, he was rumored to go to Seattle. He was heavily rumored to go to Seattle. But um, somehow he, out of nowhere, just ended up with Tom Brady again, which can make sense. And so now he's in Tampa on a one-year deal. And so I'm just curious, man, does this make the Bucs a Super Bowl favorite now? Because many people had him as a perennial favorite, but what does this do now? I mean, it just adds more, more ammunition to, to Tom Brady's disposal, to, to his weapon, more ammunition to his weapon. Um, yeah, I think after last Sunday, people like, like they, they put some people in the NFL notice the way that they dominated Green Bay, that mm-hmm. defense. I, I'll tell you what, that defense didn't do that to us, but that defense definitely stopped that bad man like in right. his tracks and it, it Dude, that was bad. Um, yeah, man. One thing about Aaron Rodgers, man, if you can get him down early, you can blow them out. Yeah, because that's one they, thing about the Packers. They showed no signs of recovery. They was up 10 0. And, mm-hmm. and that was all she wrote. Yep. Um, but uh but yeah, uh, as far as A B to the Bucks, like I I mean, it, it's I feel like it's it's a good thing for them. Uh, for a couple of reasons here. One, uh, it's low risk, very high reward. I mean, I mean, he's AB's at the point where he's probably on his last, last, last chance. So, you know, mm-hmm. any any turmoil, they can just, you know, let them go and, you know, cut their losses early and be done with it and just keep keep it going. Um, you know, very high reward. As, as you noted, when he was playing, he was the best. Wide receiver in the league, he was definitely by far head and shoulders the most productive wide receiver in the league. He takes he takes his craft seriously. The the all season workouts. Have you ever seen any videos of him like working out and getting in? It's it's insane. The boy gets it in. He he does. The boy puts in the work. He does not fuck around. He he don't. Um, Boy puts in the work for sure, man. Facts number two. It adds depth because if a lot of like. Tom Brady hasn't really had his full cast of weapons the whole year. Like Mike Evans been banged up, Godwin been banged up, uh, OJ OJ Howard's done for the year. Scotty Miller's been banged up. I mean Gronk is starting to come around, but he's still not the he he he's not Gronk. He's he's Robert Gronkowski right now. Um, <laughs> so I mean you you just you giving him more. To choose from instead of picking at the bottom of the barrel with third, fourth, fifth, sixth string wide receivers. So the third reason is, you know, Brady and A B have rapport. They they have that relationship already. Like Brady was right. fighting hard to keep uh, A B on the team last year before they let him go after 11 days. And when he got on the field, what he had like three catches and a touchdown, he made an impact already. Oh yeah. Hit and shoulders sure. the best receiver that Brady had last year for mm-hmm. one game. Yep. And then the, and then the last thing, and more importantly, they have Super Bowl aspirations. Like right now, they are the best team in that division right now. And with it being, you know, seven teams getting in the playoffs now, like why can't they make a run with Antonio Brown? Like he just, as long as he just does what he's supposed to do and I, he respects, he respects Tom Brady. So, and Bruce Arians ain't going to have it either. So it's like either going to shut up and play, you're going to be gone. Either way, Brady and them going to make a run. So. That's that's how I look at it. Yeah, man. Um, I would say yes. Um, with the repertoire that they have between Brady and, and Brown, um, with the roster that they already have, um, picking up big names like Leonard Fournette, um, now A B, um, with a uh, Robert Gronkowski. Um, Bucks are looking like a very dangerous team. They are not stopping, they are being greedy. They are doing what it takes to win a championship. Maybe some teams can take lessons on that. And so I like the fact that this is uh, going down. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really y'all 
And and A B ain't played a, a a while, but he's so good, y'all, that he can miss. How long he missed, and he's gonna come right back torching. Watch. Yep. And so, with that being said, um, I, I'm damn near picking this team as my Super Bowl favorite now. I, I can't see, I can't see, um, really them having a tough time, especially after what they did to uh Green Bay. If they get home field, they'll be a tough out. Um, they will be a very tough out. Um, you know. Well, but I'm putting it out here now in the early morning sports talk podcast, and people can look at me like I'm crazy, but this could very well be a Bucks Chiefs Super Bowl. Imagine that. Whoa. Oh, what? Imagine a Bucks Chiefs Super Bowl. Now, you're talking about a football game that would have fireworks, AB on one side, Tyreek Hill on the other side. These both teams, you see, they playing mix and match. You see that, right? You, 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 you see that the Chiefs went and they picked up the problem, the Bears view as the problem of Le'Veon Bell. They went and snatched them up real quick. And the Bucks said, okay, they did that. So, okay, let us go ahead and let's do this. Take for ten. And they went in ahead and they got A.B. You see these teams trying to send shots at each other. And so um, we're putting it out there now, man. I would like to see a Bucks chiefs Super Bowl. That would be prime time. And so I like the Bucks now where to come out of the NFC, and that is over my Bears. Um, because now with A B, I mean, goddamn, like you already have a Mike Evans who ain't really even touched the surface yet. Yeah, he um, and he's still killing. And then you got a Chris Godwin that's gonna come back. That's a lot to deal with, world. That's that's a lot. It's a lot. Um, and that's not even to include um, their productive running backs. Um, that number 28 can ball that kid. Um, and so, yeah, you know, um, Tom Brady might be screaming and all that on the sideline, but damn it, uh, he ain't going to be screaming much with AB. Um, he going to be very, very happy because that's going to be a very good reward for him, especially come down uh, in the playoffs. It will be a very good reward. You just better hope you rattle the bucks and get them all focused and, and, and rattle them mentally because they don't suppose to lose a lot of football games now. They don't. And I expect them to be dominant going forward. So, okay. Yes. Um, that is definitely <laughs> something that's very exciting. I can't wait to see them on the field. Man. Uh, I, I can't wait to see them on the field. I think that is a very good fit. Um, the world should be excited, man. And, and you think the Bucks game has some um, pedigree to it. Prior to AB, it got more pedigree now, and so um, yeah, exciting stuff, man. Wow, it, it's it's beautiful. It is it is a, it is gorgeous. I, I can't wait to watch them. I really can't. Um, so yeah, all right, man. So we, we're still sticking with the NFL. We're gonna finish out on the podcast here this morning with the NFL. Um, but I got another question for you, bro. Um, yeah. I just feel that it's a lot of powerhouses in the NFL now, and so. Just curious, who is the best team in the NFL? And so we're going to do this every week now, bro. Uh, we're going to go with Jamar's top five, and I'm going to give you my top five. And so I want to see who is your best team in the NFL and give me Jamar's top five. All right. So I'm glad you asked that. I definitely put in a little time to make this list. All right. So right now, I'm going with uh, the defending champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. I don't, I don't care. If they lost one game. Look, that that offense is an mm. A plus. And when you add uh, a proven elite running back to that core, I mean, and that defense is solid. Like, like I'm not betting against Kansas City right now. I, I don't care. Right. I will put money on Kansas City every week if I was on if I was on playing one of them fan duels, DraftKings Sportsbook. I'll put mm-hmm. money on Kansas City every week, mm-hmm. and I will feel very confident in that pick, head and shoulders. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. And as far as the list, number two, whew, the Tennessee Titans. The Titans, mm-hmm. man. Derrick Henry, he's a monster amongst men. AJ Brown, that man is a is a a beast. Did you see that stiff farm over Josh Norman? Come on, man. Man. Come on. You're talking about literally, that's a grown man. Like, 
let, let that sink in, world. That is a grown man. And he literally picked him up and threw him like four yards with such aggression. And, and he picked him literally up off his feet and just flung him forward. It was like, oh, my God. And it was effortless. Yes. Teams are afraid to tackle him. Ew, dude, he monster. Like, I'm, at, I'm to the point where I want to go out and buy a Henry jersey. Like, mm. I, I admire this guy. That guy, uh, I, and we put, and we're going to put this out there as well, world. Everybody want to keep going for these quarterbacks as MVP. I think Derrick Henry might have something to say about yeah, that if he keeps down his tear. Definitely making the case. Who was it? The last running back to win the MVP was that LT? It was LT. Hey, he's making a case, people. Um, Wrong case. But yeah, Tennessee undefeated. They're going against another undefeated team this weekend, which is the number three team on my list, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, sir. That's Shout out be to Deshaun a... Reed, man. I know you are sitting good right now with your Steelers. Man. They are looking tough. Dude, they haven't been this far. They haven't been. 5 and 0 since what the 70s since the uh Bradshaw days like that's yeah. crazy I would have never thought um no that that team is solid too uh emergence of Chase Claypool who's who's turning his and Big Ben is rocking with the offense the defense is just elite across the board I know they lost Devin Bush which is a huge blow but overall that that team is just solid you Mike Tomlin got them guys rolling uh, number four, I got Seattle Seahawks. Uh, I, I feel like they're the best team in NFC at this moment, but we'll see how that pans out going forward, especially with mm-hmm. AB and all that when he gets there week nine. But right. but yeah, Russ, DK, Lockett, like Carson. I mean, I know their defense isn't the best, but Russell, like they 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 just go out and handle business, man. I love it. Number mm-hmm. five, I'm giving respect to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, they are, they're still a tough team. Defense is still good. Lamar Jackson, still the most electrifying man in the NFL. Um, his, that, that, that scheme, that play action, the Mark Andrews, that, that often still can put up points. Defense still shutting down people. Made Carson Wentz look like a rag doll a couple of weeks ago. Um, not even mention Baker Mayfield at the beginning of the year, but, but yeah, that, that's my top five. Um, we get deep in the list, it's definitely a lot thicker than that. But the top five, that's my top five. Man, that's a beautiful top five, man. I man, that's a solid top five. Um, yeah, man. Um, I would say for number five, um, my number five team actually in this case, y'all, would be and I I, I wanted to pick the Bears. I was very hesitant on picking the Bears. I, I really was. Um <laughs> I was very hesitant. I wanted to too. Like, not yeah, man. I'm yet. like, I'm like yeah, but they got they got to prove it. They got to prove it, brother. To me, they they win Monday. Um, I might. Right, right, right. Yeah, beating the Rams because the Rams are a good football team. If if the world don't know, um, but I say number five, man. My number five team would be the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, okay. I, I like I like a lot, man. Um, everything that's going on in Pittsburgh. Um, they, you know, <laughs> they are undefeated. They have a better record than the Baltimore Ravens. Um, you know, the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, man, is, is, is balling out. This kid, Chase Claypool, James Conner, having Pro Bowl seasons. Uh, Juju Smith, uh, world, uh, I know he's a little bit of a celebrity now, but He's actually having a very productive season this year. He's had a few little rough games, but he's been very efficient. So, um, and I think that's what's been helping that team win games, really. Um, the, the quiet emergence of Juju Smith-Schuster, but not the emergence, but the quiet production, but the emergence of Chase Claypool is why they're winning yeah. games. Um, yeah. And so I like the Steelers. And when I say my top five, y'all, these teams could literally be intertwined and, and, and they're all very neck and neck even. Um, I would say the number four team for me um, is the Baltimore Ravens. And so the reason why I like the Ravens is because I feel like when they play head to head, it's going to tell the world a lot. Um, I, I like Mark Ingram, man. I like, 
you know, Calais Campbell, he's having a Pro Bowl year, y'all. He, he's doing very well in Baltimore. Um, you know, this, Lamar just running all over the field, man. It, you know, them just it's fun to watch. doing what they do, man, to, to win games. Um, they are a very strong team. Um, they did almost have a meltdown this past weekend, but I, I really like Baltimore. Um, and I like them, as I pointed out to y'all, especially in January this year. I know that they haven't had the best Januaries um, the last couple of years. But I, I, I really like this team come January. Y'all see what I'm talking about. Y'all see what time it is. Um, number three. Um, yeah, man. I mean, you you picked um, <laughs> you picked um, for your number one team, the Chiefs. Um, I like the Chiefs right now. Um, but I got them as number three. Um, mm-hmm. I got the Chiefs as number three because what appears to be the weakness for the Chiefs is – their linebacker court and their rush, you know, they, they, they don't get much pressure on the quarterback. Um, what's really holding the Chiefs defense down, y'all, is that secondary. It's Teron Matthew, it's, it's the Fuller, uh, you know, guys of the world. Um, it's the Breelands of the world. They are holding down the Chiefs right now. They got a strong secondary, one of the best in the NFL. Um, and so, you know, Patty Mahomes, of course, he's doing his thing. Le'Veon Bell, you know, he's doing his thing. Um, and, yeah, it's it's very, very special what they got going in Kansas City. And I feel really bad for putting them at number three. Um, but I just <laughs> – I, I feel really bad for putting them at number three. Um, and <laughs> I, I can say, man, it is what it is in regards to everything. But, you know, it is what it is. Number two, um, I got Seattle Seahawks. So the Seattle Seahawks, um, man, you know, they got everything going with, you know, Russ uh, being an MVP candidate. And that is really the reason why um, I'm going to go with my number one and number two teams is because I like, based off of an order of MVP candidates, that's what I'm going with. And so in this case, I think the second MVP candidate um, is Russ Wilson. Um and he could very well be in as a quarterback, come out with his uh, first MVP, uh, which he arguably is the MVP every year, just like LeBron. I swear he is. Um, you know, they are a complete football team. You, you, you find ways to lose to the Seahawks. Just with Pete Carroll, just with Russ Wilson, you'll find a way to lose. They'll make you lose. They'll find a way to beat you. And so um, Seahawks are number two and number one, my number one MVP candidate, because he's just running over everybody, um, is the Tennessee Titans and Derrick Henry. Um, that is the best team in football for me. Um, I feel they are unbeatable because they just beat you. They get to the line. They pound you. They manhandle you. They don't do a lot of fancy stuff. They're not as pretty as the Chiefs. They're not as pretty as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they're going to be where they be. But they just line up, and they just physically beat you. And so um, – as long as my boy don't get worn down Derrick Henry, which I'm pretty sure Mike Vrabel, I don't know if y'all know where Mike Vrabel is a great head coach. He is. Great head coach. Um, and he is a great, he's one of the successful disciples of, of Bill Belichick. He's one of the successful ones. There's been a lot of bad ones. Few. But he few is one successful. of the, right. He's one of the few successful um, disciples of Bill Belichick. And, um, He's doing great things in Tennessee. That's for me, y'all, is the best team in football. Um, and 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 they literally beat the Titans. You'll have to literally beat them. Um, yeah, they lucked up against the Texans. The Texans should have maybe kicked the field goal. Maybe it would have changed the trajectory of the game. Romeo Cannell and those guys got a lot of um, heat. Um, I mean, man, if they would have won that game, this season would have been completely turned around for Houston. But now they're one and five. They're looking done. Um, and so, yeah, for me, man, the best team right now in football is the unstoppable yeah. Tennessee Titans with the unstoppable Derrick Henry. Yeah. Until somebody stops him, they won't lose, period. You, you know what's scary? Um, Derrick Henry, like, if, 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 if people that paid attention, he gets stronger and better as the year progresses. He usually starts off slow. And then when mm-hmm. it gets down to the lad around December, yeah, he, that he is facts, up. bro. 
he turns up and 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 that's a point to bring up because when it gets cold yeah. they already don't want to tackle him now what about when it's freezing cold and it's 15 degrees or it's minus 10 degrees who in their right mind gonna want to tackle him Earl Earl Thomas did <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> he sure didn't he did not want to do it last year man he 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 got low and 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 basically took that stiff arm. Man, and, and then one last thing, I mean, he he show know how to make uh, Ryan Tannehill look elite out there, don't he? Show don't he, man? Him I mean, too. what a rejuvenation, man! He went from being a bust to being the man in Tennessee now, to the fact to where they said, "Mariota, pack your bags, get out of here. It's <laughs> time shit. to go, baby. We yes, we, we that, found man. our darling. It's time for you to go now." <laughs> Get out of here. Crazy. And Mariota, he's been completely forgot about when he had some productive years in Tennessee. He had a few bust years, but he had some productive years. But, I mean, maybe those quarterbacks, they just ran off the success of Derrick Henry. And so um, the more he runs, man, the more dangerous they get. And, and Jamar, that is facts. As the year progresses and as it gets colder, good luck with that. So um, that's my top five, man. And so um, – you know, it'll be very interesting to see how things change as time progress with this top five. Maybe the Bears can be there as an honorable mention. Maybe the Bucks Maybe. can be there as an honorable mention. Yeah, Maybe yeah. if uh, the Packers don't get blew out um, in big games <laughs> and, and, and primetime games, maybe they can be there. Um, we will see how things go. Um, and shout out, by the way, to um, shout out, by the way, to Baker Mayfield and um, that terrible, terrible outing. Um, from this past week against the Steelers. I thought you guys were going to be this or going to be that. I hope you are. You are playing the Bengals. So um, maybe they'll bounce back. And so with that being said, brother, let's now get into those NFL picks uh, yes. for week seven. And so, um, yes, give me a second to share my screen and we can get this going with our picks for week seven, which we got a lot of good games coming up. All right, well, so, all right, so we are starting out uh, week seven. Um, and shout out to Carson Wentz, man. He, you know, um, reminded us that, you know, they are tough in the NFC East, at least. Um, speaking of the NFC East, really quickly, bro, um, what a terrible division. <laughs> man. I mean, they usually they usually are like terrible every year, but like this year, literally, man, we are looking at a progression to where, or when I say a, a, a progression or a regression in this case, um, that's a regression analysis, folks. That's like a prediction. They could literally be a six or seven win team coming out of that division and win the championship I, for that division. I mean, we we, we have seen some like this about. 10 years ago with the NFC West when Seattle won the division seven and nine. And that's when beast mode came, uh, was born against uh, the saints in that first round game. Wow. Uh, so they were seven and nine. I thought, wow. Yeah. Really? Yep. Man. So, I mean, the, the way it's looking like they, the, the champion of that division might be worse. Yeah. They, they yeah. literally can be six and 10. I, and win I, that division. I think the Eagles will probably end up winning, and I think the only reason why the Eagles are probably looking this bad because of all the injuries that they have. But other than that, right. that, that whole division, yeah, it, it's uh, you can flip a coin, you can roll some dice, and probably pick a winner at this point. Like, bro, did you see them Sunday night? Well, sorry, not Sunday night, but Monday night against the Cardinals. I don't know if you, I don't know if the world had a chance to see that game. When I'm talking about, it looked so bad. It was like, he didn't have any protection, number one. Number two, um, when he did get protection, he was just completely, the communication between him and his lineman, Andy Dalton, and importantly, him and his receivers were just, it was abysmal. I mean, they couldn't, you know, throwing overthrows, balls coming up short, interceptions, pick sixes. It, it, it was, was just, it was rough. It, it was, was like terrible. And then, it, and then the way that Zeke was playing, it looked like he's stealing money from Jerry Jones. 
Exactly. And this guy's supposed to be the leader of the team, and he stunk out there. Supposed it to be was, an elite running back, too. I don't see it right now. It was abysmal, yes. And so shout out to the NFC East. I mean, you you guys <laughs> find a way to entertain us every single year. And shout out to the New York Giants. Uh, you still got a chance. Hang in there. Shout out to Dwayne Haskins, okay? Uh, and the Washington uh, football team. Y'all still got a chance, man. Um, and so don't y'all dare give up because the Eagles and the Cowboys will not let you down. They are literally one and another. I kid you not. All right. So um, oh, Panthers and Saints, man. That's who we got uh, starting out this slate. And so uh, who you got for this game? I am taking the Panthers. There's no Michael Thomas. Okay. There's no Emmanuel Sanders. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know who Drew Brees passing to besides Traquan Smith and Alvin Kamara. Defense not what it was last year. Yeah, I, I'm I'm taking Ted, Teddy Bridgewater and the Panthers on this one. Okay. Um, I think the Panthers are a bad football team. Um, I think that they lucked up off a weak schedule. Um, and the fact that they had the Cardinals at home helped them out a lot. Um, I like the Saints at home. I like who that nation. Um, they just got approved for fans, by the way, world. Um, and so I think that is very important for the Saints um, in that dome, in that place where it gets really noisy. And so they won't have their full fan base, of course, but they will have enough for who that nation to make some noise. And so Alvin Kamara, I feel like he's enough. The boy is so cold. I feel like he's enough to beat the Panthers on his own, literally, damn near. Um, and, and, you know, I like, uh, you know, a lot of people always sleep on this guy, but Taysom Hill, I like him to make a few big plays in this game. He always make a play. I like him to make a few big plays in this game. Um, that will be the difference in this game. And so I like the Saints at home. Um, Bills and Jets, um, tough pick here, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I'll keep it real brief, though. <laughs> um, hashtag Bills Mafia. That's my answer. <laughs> All right. Yes, that makes total sense. Um, yeah, I just can't pick the Jets, guys, um, until, um, you know, they show me otherwise. Um, as I can't pick against the Chiefs, I I, I, I can't pick the Jets. I, I can't. So I like the Bills on the road and the route. Um, Browns and Bengals. Man, I'm going to take the Browns. I feel like... Okay. They gonna settle down and they gonna they like they ran against the Steelers last week who they can't run the football against. The Browns are the leading rushing team in the league. Uh Bengals run defense is just atrocious. I I expect the Browns to control the clock and actually win this game. Same here, man. Um, you know, I like the Browns to control the clock here. I like them to have a bounce back game. I said I like this football team and I do like them to make the playoffs. Um and so this would be a great, you know, way to rebound, be a great way to get off to and finish a good start for the first uh, half of your season um, and hopefully get somewhere to be five and two. So um, the Browns, you know, Baker Mayfield at times, he stinks when he throws the ball, but against bad teams, he don't stink. So against the Bengals, I don't think he'll stink as much. And so um, it was a close game the first time world and the Bengals are at home, but the Browns, I feel like they are just a better football team. And, you know, right now the Bengals are just young. And so um, I like the Browns here. But I tell you what, world, if the Browns lose, it won't be good. And they won't be, be they won't be picked by me going forward as much if they lose to the Bengals at home. So they got to kind of win this game. Um, if, if And it was the same with the Cardinals. I had said the same thing. So I got the Browns at home. Um, Cowboys in Washington. Somebody got to win this football game. Yeah. Um, Somebody. Unless they tie. Which is possible. <laughs> Very possible. Anything's possible in the NFC East. Anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to take uh, – jeez. The Cowboys can't stop a nosebleed. Uh, mm-hmm. I- I'm going to take the football team. I think they're mm-hmm. past – their, that defensive line is one of the best in the league. I think they're going to get after her. Uh, Andy Dalton, he's definitely nowhere near Dak Prescott. And I feel like with every every bad loss for the Cowboys is uh, more money in uh, Dak Prescott's pocket. So go ahead, go get them football team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, uh, 
I actually got to agree with you here. I like the football team at home. Um, Alex Smith will get the start. Um, what an opportunity to get your first victory, um, Alex Smith, in quite some time. Nobody better than the Cowboys. They'll give it to you, man. They'll give you this victory, I promise you. Uh, they 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 look like they don't want to play football anymore. They just look terrible. Yeah, they just want to um, quit on the season. Right. And so, you know, you got to sometimes put teams like that out of their misery. This is a great opportunity to bounce back for your season and realize that, hey, you win this football game, you are in the thick of things in the division, um, which is a very weak NFC East and anything appears to be possible. You win this game, man, you can be in time for first place in this division. That was a, wow. Yes, there'll be a tie in first place yeah. uh, in this division. Well, and so, yeah, they no, will because... The, uh-uh, the, uh, what's yeah, it called? Uh, the, the Cowboys right now, they are what, two and three? Four or two and yeah, they're two and four. Yeah, but the Eagles got a title. <clears throat> right. And the Eagles are what two, four, and one. Right. Oh, and gosh, so man. right now the Eagles are in first place. But <laughs> if Washington wins, <laughs> the fact Washington, that we talking about <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, this is oh anything gosh. is possible in the NFC East. And so if Washington win this game, y'all, they could very well be in a tie for first place. And this the NFC wild. East. And so, um, yeah, you know, this is what's going on in the NFC East. And so what beautiful thing would it be, Jamar, to have the Redskins in the playoffs? I mean, sorry, the Washington football team in the playoffs. I mean, I love their <laughs> colors. So, you know, it would be nice to yeah. see those colors in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, man, that's just where we're at. So, all right. Um, Packers and Texans. So Packers and Texans, is this a bounce back game for the Packers or is this a bounce back game for the Texans, man? Or have you given up on the Texans? No, I haven't given up on the Texans. Texans have probably the toughest schedule to start off the season with. And even though I feel like the Texans should have won last week, uh, they look, they, they playing better without O'Brien and Romeo Cornell that, it, I don't know how I look at it this, uh, I just know Aaron Rodgers and them better not like, you know, try to like oversee them or take this game off or anything like that, because this is a trap game for the Packers. I'm going to pick the Packers, but I I would not be surprised if the Texans pull off an upset here. I'm just saying mm. they're hungry. Yeah, and by the way, world uh, correction. Uh, the Washington football team, if they win, they will be in second place in the division. They will be in second place, and they would literally be in striking distance of the first place Dallas Cowboys or the first place Philadelphia Eagles. Half so, game um, out. Wow. Yeah, you know, half game out. And so um, you got to laugh at that because, I mean, that literally shows you, like, how bad this division is. So um, amazing. Um, all right. So with the Pack and Texans, um, man, logical sense says they pick the Packers. Right. Um, this is a bounce back game for them. You know, um, they're going to be pissed off that they, you know, obviously lost last week and got blew out. They usually win against bad teams. Um, and the Texans look like a bad team right now. Um, I like, I want to pick the Texans though. And the reason why I, I want to pick the Texans world is because I just, their heart, you know, um, they gonna come out. They they don't want to go one and six. They don't. Mm -mm. They they don't want to do that. Um, I haven't watched this team though, so I don't know. Um, you know, like how how bad of a team they really are. They're not. But I, they're not. So they're not, man. For That's me, the thing. I, I'm gonna go with the Texans, y'all. I'm gonna go with the Texans at home. I like them to fight and and get off of ugly victory here that will come down to the fourth quarter um you know and I, I'm, I'm doing that job just literally because i want to root for deshaun watson and the texans but yeah i wouldn't be surprised if the pack is going in and take care uh, of business i understand i feel like that's a complete coin flip for me not mm -hmm. even no bias or anything just just how it's set up right yeah it's going to be a good game um lions and falcons 
Somebody got to win that game. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, um, oh, boy. Ooh. I, I, I want to say Atlanta, but I know mm-hmm. Detroit. Like, I know at times Detroit shows up a little bit, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, man. This is bad. <laughs> Jeez, Two man. bad teams. And, and, they, and it's like they all self-inflicted. That's what makes it bad. And I like they, they, they play hard and they lose. They, they just shoot their own sails in the foot. They um, totally do. I, they I, totally I'll, do. I'll take the Falcons just because they, they, they're at home and they have more talent on offense. I'll take, I'll take the Falcons. This game, literally, world, is going to be who can shoot themselves in the foot the most. The Lions, they are so used, y'all, to their history of shooting themselves in the foot. They're going to shoot themselves in the foot. And guess what the Falcons are going to do, Jamar? Oh, you can shoot yourself in the foot. I can shoot I can shoot myself in the foot more. And the Lions are going to be like, you think you can shoot yourself in the foot? I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. And before you know it, the Lions and Falcons, they will get into a shooting yourself in the foot battle. And that's just going to be the game. And somebody's just gonna have to win the game, okay? So this this is gonna be the game, literally. It's gonna be a shoot yourself in the foot battle. I promise you, both of these teams. Oh my god! Somebody gotta come out of the infamous shoot yourself in the foot bowl, and out of the annual shoot yourself in the foot bowl, oh. I gotta go with the Falcons to shoot themselves in the foot the less, because I just think the Lions just they are so immune to shoot themselves in the foot. They got a chance to go three and three here, bro. They got a chance to get at 500, be a decent team. But I bet you they find a way to shoot themselves in the foot. And the Falcons will just somehow take advantage. Um, they actually are playing decent football, the Falcons. I don't know if the world knows over the season. They are not a bad football team. They just shoot themselves in the foot a lot. And so um, possibly they can bounce back and um, – Get a good victory here over a Detroit team that loves to shoot themselves in the foot. Maybe, so, um, maybe so, because that'd be their first home win. They're they're winless at home this year, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, man. And so, um, one and five Falcons, two and three Lions. Uh, it, it, everything points to the Lions should win this game, but they they just yeah. Yep. I, I don't know what to say about the Lions, man. So I got to go with the Falcons and the Angels. Shoot yourself in the football. So um, watch out for that game. That'll be a tight, good football game. Speaking of another football game, uh, we got three good ones coming up. Uh, The Steelers and the Titans. And so just curious, man, who you got for this one? Man, this is probably game of the week right here. Mm. Um, No, Steelers defense, I think they allowed the fewest points this year. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, still has only allowed 94 points in five games. That's that's incredible. Mm-hmm. But they have not met a man like Derrick Henry. They don't have Devin Bush. The game's in Tennessee. It's gonna be a close game. But um, I'm rolling with the Titans here. That's one thing. Mm. Yeah, man. I think this is gonna be a very good football game. Um, man, who comes out with this one? Big yes, Ben and those guys and they pride and you know them playing in big games. Um, the coaching experience of Mike Tomlin in big games, he's been in so many big games. But then you got Derrick Henry and his approach, great coach and Mike Babel. They are at home. Um, I'm gonna have to go with the Steelers here. And I know right now the Tennessee Titans are the best team in football based off of the first six weeks, but um the Steelers, man, I like that pedigree, bro. I like their, their experience, the big game experience. Um, and I feel like the Steelers, man, they'll find a way to send a big message to the league. Um, and so somebody got to win this game. And so Oof. I think the Steelers, man, they'll come out in a big, impressive victory um, and beat the Titans, I think, by two touchdowns here, 26-13. Oof. Yes, yes, yes. Hey. Um, I think Derrick Henry will run all over. But I, you know, um, but then again, Dupree is out now, right, for the Steelers. They just lost him for the, um, possibly for the season. 
And so that's, that's just a big question mark. They Bush lost one of their linebackers. Yes, yeah, Bush. It's Bush. Bush. And yeah, so he's, he's um bad. yeah. Does 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 Derrick Henry attack that lane now? Does he attack that hole? Because it's gonna be open, I think. And so um, but I still like the passing game. I like the explosiveness of uh, the Steelers to come out in this game. It's it's, a, um, it's, a, it's like two different styles. So it's gonna yeah. be fun to watch. Yep. Two different styles, ground and pound, air it out. So, um, but I like the Steelers, you know, to air it out um, and, and come out on top of that game. Uh, the Buccaneers and Raiders, man, this could be a dangerous game for the Bucs. But, yep. um, you know, we'll see. So, curious, man, who you got for this one? Boy, I feel like, man, this is definitely a trap game for the Bucs. And uh, you know what? Going to the I think I am. Oh wow! I think, I think Gruden wants <laughs> wants uh, wants a part of that Buccaneers <laughs> for his own personal uh, bias. Uh, it just sounds out the Raiders in that in, in that stadium, man. I'm just saying, like the Raiders, they get up, and I think mm-hmm. they're gonna get up for this one. Just when you mm-hmm. getting ready to count them out, they they're they're there. I'm taking right. the Raiders in a in a nail biter here. Mm. Yeah, um, interesting man. Um, and I, I started to go with the Raiders. Um, I'm gonna go with the Raiders, and I like the Bucks. I really do, man. But you know, it's some about the the magic of the Raiders, man. They are a tough team. And a lot of people, I don't know if the folks know, but people always want to talk about Derrick Henry and, and, and number 99, that's what I call him, out of uh, Carolina. But Josh Jacobs is a beast, if folks didn't know. Brother is one of the top running backs in football. He's a baller. And I feel like he's going to control this game. Um Possibly Leonard Fournette and those guys, they can have a good game. But he he looks he doesn't look the same in Tampa, Leonard Fournette. So I like uh, Josh Jacobs to dominate this football game, um, and I like the Raiders man to come out and what would be an upset for most most people in the NFL world. This will be an upset. I like the Raiders in an upset at home, um, but this will be a great football game. We said the Steelers and Titans will be a great football game. This will be a great football game, and it looks yeah. like Ian Jones agrees with us as well. And Jones got the Raiders at home as well. And so uh, shout out to him. It's Ian. interesting. Yeah, what's up, man? So, you know, looks like we all unanimous here in regards to the Raiders. So uh, we could very well be wrong. We all going out on a limb to count Tom Brady out, but nah, not this week. I don't think so. So, uh, yeah. Um, with that being said, now, man, let's go ahead with the Chiefs and Broncos. Are you picking against the Chiefs? No. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I know it's a division game, but no, Chiefs. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, I tell y'all what, world. This will be a dangerous game, and it'll be a dangerous game because a lot of people didn't think that the Broncos would win last week, but they did. And so that Bron- that that's for yeah that that's <laughs> that. that uh, I, We'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, the Broncos, they are a dangerous team too, world. And they're dangerous in mile high and that altitude <laughs> up in Denver where it's not normal air. Um, Mahomes, at times, he struggles in Denver historically. Um, but I still won't pick against the Chiefs. But, boy, I promise you, uh, this could very well turn out to be a loss. Um well- What's going to happen is they're going to run the ball down their throats just like they did last week. That's what's going to happen. If if they can do that, they can win the game. Therefore, they can control the clock because the Chiefs did run the ball down their opponent's throat, the uh, Bills last week. They just ran it down their throat. And so um, that's a very good formula, man. But I got to go with the Chiefs, and and I got to agree with you. Like, if they can control the clock, um, this preserves Patty Mahomes, too. 
if, if that running game for you know takes care of everything, he don't have to do much. That's what you want. You want him for January. You want him to be healthy. You need him to be healthy. And so, yes, um, if the Chiefs can control that clock, yeah, definitely, man. The Chiefs would uh, take care of business for sure. Uh, this is interesting right here. Uh, Gardner Minshew versus Justin Herbert. Um, he appears to be a disciple of Tom Brady, according to um, what happened with Nick Foles. I don't know if you heard, but Nick Foles didn't get his hand shook by um, Tom Brady after the game. And the media kind of pointed it out. Nick Foles kind of played it off and like, it's all right. Tom Brady's basically saying he was just running out because, you know, he was, you know, sometimes just run out of games. Like he just leaves the field. He wasn't even thinking about it. And he mentioned, uh, well, people mentioned that he shook Aaron Rodgers' hand. He shook, um, he shook uh, Justin Herbert's hand and another guy's hand. But these are all like two guys are like all time greats. I forgot the other guy. Uh, well, Drew Brees, he shook his hand. He mm -hmm. shook um, Aaron Rodgers' hand, and then he shook Justin Herbert's hand. And so I'm like, why did he shake Justin Herbert's hand and not Nick Foles? He must be a <laughs> disciple of. He must be mentoring his kid or something. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, but um, basically, man, I mentioned that because we got the Jags and Chargers, and so uh, just curious, man, who's your pick for this game? Um, I'm taking the Chargers. Okay. Jags defense is trash. Justin Herbert is he he's looking every bit of that sixth overall pick. Mm -hmm. Uh like Chargers looks rejuvenated with him in the lineup. Nothing like no disrespect to Tyrod Taylor, but it, it just this is Herbert's team. They rolling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree, man. This is uh Justin Herbert's team and he looks very good out there on the field. He looks NFL ready. They should have um, beat the, the Saints last week. They should have beat the Saints last week. And that's one thing I always hate about poor, um, you know, uh, what's the care coach name, um, you know, for the Chargers? The uh, Anthony Lynn. Yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I know it's Anthony. I'm like, what's the last name? Anthony Lynn. He always comes up short, man. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I got the Chargers, man. Um I think they'll find a way to look really good in this game and get that game that they deserve. They deserve to win. And so, you know, he looks good, man. And so um, I, I like the Chargers. I like that future, bro. I, I like that future. I really like that future, the Chargers. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, especially with this kid, Herbert. And so, um, yeah. And then Jones stated, Herbert shocked me. He looks good, man. Poor Tyrod. Yes, poor Tyrod Taylor. Um, yeah. But it, that, that's how the business goes, man. It's how the business goes. And so just got to sometimes go with the kid and let him go ahead and get that experience. And so um, what better experience than the Jaguars in that defense? Oh, yeah. Field day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I got the charges at home, man. Uh, this is a very interesting game, world. It is. The Niners and the Patriots. It is, man. You, you took the words out of my mouth again. I was going to say that. Yes. Uh, man, this, this, shoot. And Patriots, imagine them being two and four. It is definitely possible. I, I know the Niners are, you know, they, they sold their souls to beat the Jets in week two and lost like half their roster with injuries. Uh, but this, Why would you this sell is, your soul to beat the Jets? Why? It wasn't worth it. All they it had to do was show up in pads. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Man, this is a... Jeez. Crazy. My mind is telling me that the Niners are winning this game. That's my mind. Mm -hmm. My heart is pulling for Cam Newton here. My right. mind is telling me to pick the Niners. I'm going to follow my mind because sometimes my heart leads me somewhere I don't need to be. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, um, I'm picking the Niners here. It's a tough game, though. I feel like Niners by a field goal on this one. Yeah, that's tough. Man. Yeah, man, it, it <clears throat> sucks because this is depressing because I hate to see Cam Newton, Bill Belichick, and the Patriots, those guys. Uh, and Jones got the Patriots <laughs> in a shootout. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so Cam Newton in a shootout. Um, is I, I guess it's possible, and um, you know, uh, 
I guess he never is in a shootout, but possibly I mean, against but, the Niners. But you can see them win, though. You can see the Patriots winning this game, though. Yes, I definitely can see the Patriots winning from their pedigree, being at home, that dark blue uniform, that beautiful uniform, Foxborough. I can see that. Um, and I can see them not wanting to go three and three. They'll have to earn their stripes against this Niners team, though. Because people yeah. might not remember they just came fresh off the Super Bowl. This is still a good football team with a winning record. Um, and they, you know, are not pushovers. They're obviously three and two for a reason. Um, even though for most people, this has been a bad season for the Niners, but they're looking to bounce back. And um, this could be a defining game for both of them, especially the Patriots. This is the defining game. They lose this game, they're in trouble. And so um, I got to go with the Patriots, man. I'm going to go with my heart like a fool here. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go with the Patriots at home. I, I don't blame you. And I'm going to just point this out as a, as a little uh, FYI. So, and it, it, there's, there's a rumor, but there's legs to this rumor here. So the Falcons are like, they, they want to rebuild, right? So there's a fire sale going on. They want to get rid of Matt Ryan. Okay, but... They also want mm-hmm. to get rid of Julio Jones. And there is legs to this rumor of Julio ended up in New England. Really? Not, not saying it will happen, but I'm just saying there, there's a little smoke to that fire on that one. Yeah, imagine that. Uh, if, if that happens, then you got to really watch out for the Patriots. Um, this game is also important for that division. You know, it's yeah. important for that division. Um, they third right now. They're third um, in Miami. As I told people, Miami, they've grown up. They've grown up, world. They're they're not the little kids that people think that they are, like, just the pushovers. The Dolphins are not pushovers. They are a good football team, and they've been waiting for their moment for quite some time. And so, um, yeah. Uh, But with that being said, we're not focusing on the Dolphins. We're focusing on the Patriots. So I like the Patriots to come out with this one at home. Oh, good game right here, man. The Seahawks and the Cardinals. This is NFC West implications, or is it? No, I mean it, it is. This is definitely uh this is this is definitely uh an important game in the NFC West and also in the NFC wildcard um stake. <sighs> Cardinals at home. I I can't I, I it's just like just like uh, Mahomes. I can't. Right. Yeah, I can't bet. You, you it's can't. hard for me to bet against Russell Wilson. I I just yeah. can't do it. I, 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 I'm with you, brother. I, I can't do it. I know Seattle's defense sucks. I know Arizona at times their offense looks really good, and at times they struggle. I mean, Kyler Murray only completed nine passes last week, and they routed the the the, the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Nine um, passes. But, they just show you how strong their running game is. Yeah. Um, yeah, Seahawks, though. I'm Russell Wilson. I'm taking him. Mm. Wow. Um, world, I got news for you. I like the Cardinals at home. I got an upset brewing in Glendale, Arizona. That is right. Yeah, run out your chair, Jamar. Fall over. Do whatever you want to. The Seahawks, they should have got A.B. They screwed up. And so now as a result, the Cardinals will shock the world and they will shock the Seahawks. Wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. <laughs> okay, how do, how do they, okay, I, I understand that, you know, we, we talked about how great AB is. We, 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 we definitely talked, all right, for, for, for one, for one, it's not like AB is gonna play this game. And for two, more importantly, <laughs> they, they got like the best like why we see what do in the league as far as numbers is concerned. They, they, they're good without them. But continue. I'll, I'll step aside. I know, man. I know you got those beasts and Metcalf and beasts and that little bitty itty bitty motorball is what I call him in Seattle. Y'all know who that kid is. Um, he's been balling for a number of years in Seattle. But look, man, the Cardinals at home, um, they are uh, undefeated. Um, And then additionally, they, I don't know if the world knows, but Deshaun Hopkins has been a great fit with this team, y'all. To me, he arguably right now with the injury of Michael Thomas is the best receiver in football right now. 
some people might think is DK Metcalf, but, um, you know, I like this kid, man. Um, Deshaun Hopkins is playing a, playing a great game. Um, they are at home. They have a strong running game, if the world didn't know. Their defense is pretty darn good. And they got two great corners um, in both brothers. Uh, they're not brothers, but their last name is Peterson's. We know of Patrick Peterson, and then it's another kid named Peterson, too. That is a baller for the Cardinals. Um, the Cardinals, y'all, is a good football team, and people have been clamoring about this team. I think they send a statement. They send a big statement. You know how teams have statement games, Jamar? This sure. will be a statement game to put the NFL on notice about the Cardinals, number one. They're riding that wave. They're, they're believing that they're a lot better um, by blowing out the uh, Cowboys. So they're, they're a little high off that still. And then they're at home. And then they have all these things I mentioned. And so, and plus, I want to also point out that this is a division game. And with a division game, anything is possible in a division game. And so for those reasons, y'all, I like the Cardinals at home to shock the world and upset the Seattle Seahawks. I mean... I mean, we made bolder picks. I mean, I but realistically, I can see it happening. So I, I ain't mad at you. All right. Thank you for that, sir. I appreciate that. All right. So to conclude our picks, uh, we will conclude with our Bears. The Bears uh, going to L.A. against the Rams on Monday night. Uh, what, 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 how turned up is that going to be for all the Bears fans um, going up to L.A. against the Rams, against a good football team? Um, so Jamar, um, who you got? All right. So two things of merchandise. See that bad man back there? Number 52. Yes, sir. Khalil Mack. Shout out to the Mack yeah. daddy. And, and just to represent the rest of the defense. Uh, 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 Uh-oh. Uh, 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 These are, uh, this is Jamar Goodman merchandise, by the way. Imagine having Mack, Jackson, Fuller, Hicks, and Roquan all on the same team. And guess what we do? And one thing about your shirt, Jamar, is that all those guys are on three different levels of the defense, okay? Yep. All are three different levels and all are, I feel like gonna be can guys one day, um, especially with the Mac Daddy, especially with Jackson, especially with Fuller. Hicks and Roquan got a damn good chance. They're for sure gonna be pro bowlers. Hicks is already a pro bowler. And Roquan, I think, is going to be a solid vessel for us for many, many, many years to come. What a baller he is. Um, and so, yes, I um, – go go ahead. I, I, I got the Bears, bro. I got the Bears. And the yeah. reason why I got the Bears is because I like the Bears to force turnovers. I like them to make big plays in the big moments and, and make things happen in big moments um, with turnovers from um, our great secondary. We got a great secondary when we're blessed to have a great secondary. Um, and so, yes, I got the Bears at home. All right, and, and of course, I'm picking the Bears as well. Um, so the last time that we played them was two years ago and it was in a similar spot. It was a prime time game. And the world wanted to know, are we for real? Cause the Rams was, you know, hot that year and we kind of, we 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 halted the Rams in their tracks. Like their offensive momentum, like hit a roadblock. We we shut them down, and it was ugly for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know this time around, they're probably thinking about that, but I feel like it's gonna be the same thing. Um, I feel like we're in similar positions once again. Our rookie Jalen Johnson, um, he's second in the league, and I guess uh, what is it? Um, as far as lowest percentage of passes completed when being targeted, mm. number one is Kyle Fuller. Wow. Our duo of corners are balling right now. Mm-hmm. Jackson mm-hmm. is elite. We are, I feel like we have elite players on all three levels on defense. Our offense is actually moving the ball now with Nick Foles. Nick Foles, he went against the, the first ranked pass defense, the sixth and the seventh in his first three starts. And and we are two and one in that time span. I mean, we lost to the Colts. I mean, I'm not mad at that loss. They're a good team. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like we get it done, man. Cause uh once we get um 
Jared Goff moving in that pocket. Once he starts running around, it's a wrap. I call yep. it happy feet. Once happy once quarterback feet. to happy feet that that not supposed to have happy feet, it's a wrap. Yep. Get a, we definitely get a couple of turnovers off him too, for sure. Um, and yeah, man, I, I just want to shout out Akeem Hicks um, because I feel like if he was healthy last year, we would have made the playoffs. What a big impact that dude has. He has yeah. such an incredible impact um, in so many ways on the game. And so and shout out to Robert Quinn, man, who had a great game last week. The, the, the defensive line been playing out their mind for the last three weeks. They continue that you know, yeah, it's going to be hard for us to be beaten. Facts. Be very, very, very hard for us to be and, beaten. And so, go ahead. And, and one last thing, like, we are generating pressure with the front four again, with the with the line. Like, mm-hmm. that was the key to our success a couple of years ago. We didn't have to blitz anybody. We got pressure. They made them throw the ball early. We was able mm-hmm. to read them passing lanes, get turnovers. It's, I feel like Pagano – like may may have like found something out, may have I don't know watching old film, but he figured it out. And I feel like our defense is about to be rolling, rolling. I know we've been playing well already, but I feel like it's about to turn up another notch here, man. All right, man. Yes, and thank you for that because the weather's getting colder, and so yes. with the weather's getting colder, that turns out to be an advantage for us in Chicago, um, especially if we got a good football team. And so with that defense, that is a very good point, man. They will apply some pain to folks um, because they don't want to play in that cold weather. Now, we'll be in warm weather, don't get us wrong, but our defense and great defense travels no matter where they play. And so um, with that being said, I like the Bears uh, here as well. And so, yes, with that being said, Jamar, man, I think we got all the games for this week. Well, I think we got everything. Um, Doesn't appear that we missed any. And so, yes, sir, man, in that case, um, as we conclude, man, any final thoughts or shout outs? Uh, let's see, final thoughts. Uh, you know, we are what? Less than two weeks from the election. So, you know, get out and vote. I saw that mm-hmm. you voted early. Shout out to you for voting early. I saw that. Thanks, sir. Uh, avoid the long lines, you know. Yep, um, get out the way. You know, and just uh, I want to give a shout out. I just can't think of who to give a shout out to, but but nothing but love for you know everybody doing what they're doing, man. Yes, I hear you, man. Um, I hear you. So yeah, um, just in regards to shout outs, man. Shout out to um, LBJ on getting that you know fourth title. Um, shout out to our essential workers. Um, doing what they do every day for us, man, and. And shout out to everybody just keeping things moving in regards to our society. Shout out to the brothers that's taking care of their families, their loved ones, and the women that's out there holding things down, things down for their families and everything. That was on my mind this morning. I was just thinking about that. Um, and yeah, man, uh, in regards to final thoughts, get out there, y'all vote. Let y'all voice be heard. Don't be discouraged um, and state that your vote does your vote does not count. That is a darn lie. That is a lie from the enemy. That is a lie from anybody to say that, oh, my vote doesn't count. Your vote counts and it makes a very important impact. So please get out and vote, man. I tell you what, Jamal, like with me, man, I um, went to vote this past Monday. It was October 19th, bro. And literally the lines were wrapped around the corner. Okay. Uh, my cousin voted in the South suburbs and she stated the lines were literally around the corner. And so it shows that a lot of people are trying to make their voice be heard. They're getting out. Um, I urge you all to do the same. Um, early voting is where it's at, man. If you can get your early vote in, get it in because on the third is going to be a lot of folks. Um, and a lot of folks are especially going to come out for number 45 because they want people to see that Biden is in the lead. They want people to see that. Um, And then when November 3rd come out, all those hidden voters are gonna come out. So it's important that we have our voters come out as well. Um, And, you know, I'm I'm not basically trying to promote any divisiveness here. We don't do that here uh, on the early mornings. We don't do that here. But, you know, um, I'm just urging everybody, um, whether you're in the rural, whether you're in the inner city, whether you're this or that, get out, vote. Make your voice be heard.
And other than that, um, there's an uptick in cases all around the country. Um, and so everyone, please, if you could wear your mask, be safe. Um, if you're young, you're healthy or whatever, um, it's not about you, it's about the next person. So wear your mask, be safe. And um, with that being said, man, that concludes my final thoughts and my final shout outs. Um, thank you all this morning for participating and tuning in uh, to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. You can find us um, in various places, um, including uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, uh, please subscribe to our page on YouTube on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. You can find it just like that on Spotify, the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Literally type it in that way. Um, you can find us on oh. various. Go ahead, Jamar. Also, we, we are on Instagram now. Beautiful. We are on Instagram live as well. And so you can find us there, all you Instagrammers. We are on various platforms, man. Please show us some support. Um, we, we do this. We really do this. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's lovely to get that support. It's lovely to get that participation because when you guys participate, it feeds us and it makes us have a richer conversation. It makes us have a richer um, point of feedback and different things. And so you can find us y'all on those various platforms. Um, and so, you know, uh, we always open to folks coming on um, and, and chopping it up with us and having a, a great way to enter into that weekend. And so, yes, uh, thank you all for participating. Thank you all for tuning in in advance. Um, and so with that being said, my brother Jamar, appreciate you. Um, thank you all for tuning in to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Have a blessed and productive weekend. Peace. Peace.